So uh, this is more uh, structured towards a uh, hands-on workshop, but I'll just uh, try to make it into a short talk about what Ansible is. How many of you here are already using Ansible? Uh, okay. Uh, interesting. So usually uh, you have like 10 or 15 people who raise their hands. Uh, so Ansible is uh, one of those tools which makes uh, configuration and deployment uh, uh, within the same tool. Uh, earlier on, you had configuration tools like CF Engine, Puppet, Chef, and all that. And then again, uh, deployment, uh, you had different kinds of uh, 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 deployment tools like uh, uh, Capstrino, Fabricate, uh, and, uh, uh, and some people used to have their own in house built uh, deployment tools also. So, what Ansible has, uh, um, has uh, brought together is uh, its own uh, DSL, uh, domain specific language, to uh, to make uh, both uh, configuration and deployment within the same tool, and this one reduces this one reduces the overhead because you didn't have to learn another tool for deployment also. And Ansible is very uh, uh, so it's it saw uh, uh, one of the few pain points of uh, most uh, developers and operation guys saying that before it used to be like uh, the developers used to also say like, hey, it's working on my machine, why isn't it working over there? Uh, right now the scenario is not that much different. It's more like it's working on my container, why it's not working there? So, but uh, this, was, uh, this was the scenario uh, uh, before and even now. Uh, all, we, all we are doing is uh, uh, finding better ways to package software and better ways to deploy and deliver software. Uh, <coughs> so, and, uh, Ansible is one of those simple tools uh, which, uh, uh, like, uh, very few. I mean, if you take a look at it, there are about three million open source projects. Uh, if, you, if you combine GitHub, source code, and all of them, only twenty thousand of these uh, uh, make it to upstream distributions like a Debian or a Fedora, and only like uh, uh, five or six thousand of these packages make it into a supported. Uh, Supported Linux distribution like a Red Hat or a Ubuntu LTS or like this. So, so one, one, one of the things is uh, one of the things which I uh, which I would like you guys to think is why do these? There are lots of open source softwares. Uh, like every day, somebody in some development team or operations team is making it in GitHub web page and putting out the school hacks. What really works? In the infrastructure space and with open sources, the most stable of these softwares are the ones which stable in the most simplest of these softwares make a huge impact than uh, softwares with more advanced features. So, uh, Ansible is a very simple, uh, simple in terms of dependencies. Like how many of you had to deploy an application, uh, like a Ruby application or a Python application, where the developer source code is only like fifteen thousand lines of code or 10,000 lines of code, but the dependencies of that thing are like 200, 250 packages which come from pip and uh, Ruby gems. This is the thing, when people write software for infrastructure uh, like Ansible, the dependencies, the only dependencies, uh, I mean, you don't really need to have Ansible installed on your target machines. All you need is Python and OpenSSH. How cool is that? Okay. So th th these are one of the things which made Ansible very famous and stateless. Uh, and uh, you just needed Python uh, 2.x, 2.7 uh, uh, for the more stable ones. Uh, Python 2.x and OpenSSH. Since most of the computers uh, use TCP as one of the forms of speaking to each other, and OpenSSH is installed in most of the computers, these are the things which were uh, uh, which which were kept in mind with the designers of this. And uh, these are few of the things which. Uh, uh, which I wanted to cover, but I uh, guess I'll do it in my uh, uh, web tutorial uh, where you know, uh, what was not covered in this tutorial was uh, topics like uh, Ansible Java Vault and Roles. These are advanced uh, Ansible uh, topics. Uh, so uh, this is one of uh, if you are trying to deploy systems, uh, how many of you use Bash for deployment? Not many, right? right Set for CF Engine or Puppet. Okay. So, um, uh, deployment and configurations has been evolving over a period of time. Uh, so there has been a saying that uh, we have been able to send uh, Linux to the Mars on the rover project, but we have not able to 
we have we have not been uh, able to solve the packaging problems. So one other thing is there is no perfect packaging solution and deployment solution. We will always evolve to better better solutions over a period of time. Uh, at this given point of time, Ansible uh, uh, Ans Ansible was a tool uh, written by a person known as Michael Dehan. Uh, Red Hat acquired it. It's, uh, it's supported by Red Hat, and also the the open source version is still available, and it's, the licenses have not been changed as such. Um, and uh, uh, you can launch, uh, it, it is primarily an automation tool, even if you are just a developer, you can start using Ansible to uh, get your infrastructure to a desired state. What do you mean a desired status? You expect something, uh, your system to be at one certain state, uh, as in the database should be there for these number of applications, and these applications should always be running on these machines. So. Uh, uh, Ansible is one of the tools which uh, uh, automates most of your uh, infrastructure and deployments. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean it's agentless as I said. Uh, it uses a push model uh, for sending uh, what you need to what how your infrastructure should be at what state your infrastructure should be. Um, it's top to bottom monitoring, uh, as in the tasks are executed uh, one by one, and you can also group these tasks together. Uh, uh, it uses YAML. Uh, few of uh, like few of the configuration management tools use JSON. YAML is also a simple uh, representation form. Uh, so basically, you have uh, uh, the basic architecture is also very simple. You have the control node and your managed nodes. Control node is where you need to install your Ansible and where your playbooks, uh, uh, where something known as plays would be installed from which you can get your infrastructure to a desired state. Uh, uh, the only thing which you need on the, uh, the control node is Python 2.7 and then you can install Ansible. Most of the distributions, uh, uh, most of the popular Linux distributions only ship Ansible uh, uh, with them, uh, Fedora does, CentOS does, uh, uh, you need to enable one repository known as the EPL repository. Uh, uh, Ubuntu also has a PPA where you can just uh, do, uh, after you install the repository, just do app get install uh, Ansible uh, and uh, Ansible uh, installs on the system. Managed was just need Python 2.7 and uh, open system. Uh, yeah, uh, so this is the so uh, you need something known as an inventory file. Uh, I'll just show what an inventory file would look like. Uh, uh, sorry, in this machine, I just. So, uh, I mean, let me explain what an inventory file uh, would look like. It's like, uh, say, uh, on your machine or on your infrastructure, you have like 10 hosts. Uh, say, four are your web services and four are your database services. All you have to do is you, you need to provide the IP addresses or the FTDN of these uh, nodes on, on an inventory file and, uh, and uh, save it. You can save it as anything, host or web server or uh, uh, YAML file or a simple text file. Uh, This is how uh, um, I'll just use the uh, This is how an uh, Ansible uh, playbook uh, looks like, uh, and, and your your uh, file can look like. <laughs> So this is how your inventory file can uh, would look like. You can say these three machines are my Red Hat machines. This is my Fedora machine. That's my Windows machine. And uh, uh, 
uh, I mean, uh, within within Linux, you have different flavors of Linux. You can just mention that these are the Linux, uh, or you can, if, if you want to say, uh, send a command, ping all to all the systems in this uh, in this network or a group of computers. So you can you can specify tasks uh, as ad hoc to only these particular machines, or you can provision and deploy for all the machines which are available in the uh, in the network. Uh, and uh, yeah, these, these are how few of the inventory files would look like. Uh, so you, you can you can define uh, the range of servers also, saying that okay, these x number of servers need to be provisioned with this this particular kind of workload. So you, you can use the range functions and also uh, it's like your Python range, uh, and uh, you can also uh, uh, get particular tasks to particular computers also. So most of you, uh, if you're from the developer background, you, you can see one of the uh, formats is YAML format, it's pretty popular among the Ruby Python uh, developers. Uh, so uh, Ansible will, uh, I mean, uh, the parser will recognize the YAML file. Uh, all the YAML files have three three dashes on the top and three dots on the bottom, and this is basically like your you are logically defining uh, certain groups. You can think of it like a dictionary also. For example, uh, name uh, is Fubar Job System Administrator Skills Ahri. And then uh, the, it, it is very strict about its indentation. So you have the two space indentation and the four space indentation if you want to group. For example, you want to say, I want to run Nginx uh, at one level, and at the same level, you want to say, I want these options to harden Nginx with SC Linux. So you can mention it in particular groups about you want a configuration in a particular way. Uh, so this is how a list in a YAML will look like. Uh, so, uh, and list is basically, uh, it's like a Python list. Uh, here it's basically uh, denoted by uh, the dashes with the, uh, with the proper indentation. And, uh, or, or a dictionary would look something like this, where you have a key and a value, key and a value. Uh, for example, uh, uh, this one comes, this YAML file combines both uh, your list and your dictionaries uh, with the key value and also the list below that. This is, uh, uh, you can use, uh, you can group your systems, your uh, servers together as a form of a dictionary or as a list. Also. So, yeah. And you have Boolean values. Say you want to install in these, you want to find. Uh, uh, you want to find certain software is already running uh, and you don't have to install it again, you can check for those things before or if you want to see if, the, if these group of servers, some are alive or some are not live, uh, then it's one of the ways which you can look into. Uh, and you can also use the pipe and the uh, greater than symbol for uh, line spanning many, uh, 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 li line spanning and also ch chaining uh, your uh, commands. If for example, you want to see, you want to get the ID of the uh, ID of the user, and also you want to see what groups the user is uh, part of the system, then you can use the pipe command. Uh, so these are few of the. Uh, so I don't think so. Uh, Ansible is installed on this system. What I can say is uh, uh, there are uh, three main concepts uh, in Ansible. One is the uh, uh, one is the host host systems. Next is the playbook, and uh, then you have the repository of modules and plugins uh, which install. Uh, so uh, one of the tools is uh, Ansible Doc. Uh, if you have Ansible installed, you can also install this tool known as Ansible Doc. And uh, most of the cloud providers, AWS is the most supported uh, one for the cloud providers. And you want to see what AWS operations uh, you can use. You just give a command ansible-doc and that module name. It will show what are the operations which you can do. And uh, the community around modules is very uh, very popular and very strong. Uh, all the all your favorite uh, databases, your MariaDB, MySQL, Postgres, all, all of the developers, uh, and uh, the community members have put their modules. If there is an operation which you have to do on a particular database, it is already there in the Ansible module. It's most probably there in the Ansible module. All you have to see is uh, is that operate how you have to consume that operation. If you just do Ansible log, say like a AWS or Postgres, it gives that what that operation is and how you can consume that operation. <coughs> Thank you.
So playbooks are one of the uh, playbooks are one of the uh, uh, ways you can get a system or an infrastructure to a design state. Uh, so uh, uh, all these plays are written are written in YAML format, and uh, these plays can con consist of uh, lists of tasks, and you can also group these tasks to check, modify, or also. And one thing about Ansible is it's idempotent. Idempotent as in, for example, you have ten servers. And in these 10 servers, uh, uh, you have to uh, group, uh, you have to install Nginx on all these 10 servers. And three of these servers uh, uh, doesn't have AC Linux. Okay? So what happens is uh, Ans Ansible would run on all these servers and then error out with this message saying that uh, in these three uh, servers, uh, AC Linux was uh, not installed. Then what happens is you can actually program it. Uh, in a YAML, uh, I mean, you can uh, write a task in, in YAML saying that install uh, Nginx on these three servers, and then again you rerun those things. The first seven systems it will not rerun again because it's already done, and the next systems it will install and it will uh, uh, it will give an output uh, saying that yes, it has been uh, successfully installed. So uh, in a playbook, you can contain uh, uh, more than uh, one play, and uh, these are a few attributes of a playbook. Um, uh, I can show you a playbook. This is how a playbook. Uh, So basically, uh, if, you, if you take a look into this, this is like uh, you can mention host is equal to all. It is going to look at all the uh, all the machines which uh, you have given in your inventory file. Your inventory is basically all your VMs, your hardware, your containers. It can be anything. Uh, uh, it's IP address or your FTDN. So in, in this thing, it is saying that on all these machines, you install an uh, Nginx package and the, uh, you can specify a version. Or you can say uh, it is uh, get the latest package from that uh, repository. Right now, in Ansible 2.3 and 2.4, it has been abstracted in a way that uh, you don't really have to tell Ansible that uh, this is uh, this is a Ubuntu machine or this is a Fedora machine or CentOS. Uh, it is going to figure out uh, which uh, uh, which operating system is running and then install the dependencies too. Like you, you might have in a case where. Uh, you have paid subscriptions for few hardware and then you want to run in an open source version uh, unsupported versions on different set of hardwares you can you can provision it uh, that way also so, uh, and you can mention uh, where it needs to be installed for a particular thing and what the package name is and, uh, and uh, each of these are place each of these tasks are place saying that you install this package, you create this directory, and then you update the configuration file. Now here, uh, I, uh, the ones which you see in your uh, site name, uh, this variable uh, is in a variable, okay? Uh, this, this one is a Jinja variable. Uh, we'll come to Jinja a bit later. It's a template thing. For example, uh, say you have 10, 10 systems which are your web server facing through, uh, facing through a, uh, a load balancer. Then you can mention the range of uh, that thing and site name will automatically get it and put it over here and then install in each of these uh, uh, nodes. And uh, uh, you can also mention uh, uh, like how it needs to be run. So this is the, what I mentioned by design status. You are installing the system. Not only installing, you are telling Nginx to restart the uh, to restart it and again get these names, put it, restart each service and then uh, Give me an output or, and uh, mention the state. So uh, you're, you're kind of automating the whole process where you, uh, you before you used to write a bash script saying that install this, then exit out, install this, then exit out, and then here you can mention it for group of computers together. No matter do you, you have five computers or even ten thousand computers, it's the same. As long as you can get your host names uh, and uh, you can get the whole, uh, I mean, uh, experience or the IP address. Uh, uh, into the inventory file, you can provision uh, thousands of computers together in a single command. Uh, so, 
So, um, and another one is, uh, yeah, privilege es uh, escalation attributes. Privilege escalation attributes would mean, uh, so, um, for example, you can log in as a user and then become sudo, and or then get root access to. A, uh, so you can mention these things in a in a in a playbook, saying that once you become a root user, then start getting all of these uh, privileges. Uh, one thing to note that uh, all the all the configuration uh, is based on an ansible.cfg file. You either put it in your project repository where you want to your controller node or your project where you want to trigger these applications from. It will either look for your project based uh, configuration in an ansible cfg script or it will take a look into slash etc ansible ansible.cfg for a whole system wide uh, preference. Uh, Then you have task attributes. Uh, uh, again, you need to mention that in a, uh, in a YAML format, and these are tasks. You can tell first task, second task, third task, you know, and then uh, it, it goes from top to down uh, in the order. For example, you can say uh, enable HTTP uh, D and uh, enable root. For example, you can tell uh, install the package HTTP, and then the first task is uh, start the service HTTP and make it true. And then you can say the second task, third task, like that. You can give multiple tasks. Uh, so even these are uh, few tasks. Uh, you can group these tasks also together. The, uh, the level of indentation will define uh, the priority of the task, uh, even within within a given task. Um, and also, uh, there is a tool. Uh, from Ansible, you can also check the syntax of what is right and what is wrong in a YAML script. Sometimes the most common errors uh, which people face uh, uh, while getting used to uh, Ansible is the indentation in YAML. Uh, since it's item potent, it doesn't really hurt a lot uh, over here. The other concept is the variables. Uh, you can set uh, you can set the variables. Uh, I mean, the, it, it's like most programming languages. You have a local. Uh, uh, you have the scope of a variable which is local and then global. Even here, you can mention certain certain variables for a task which needs to be done across clusters for a group of computers or within the same computer with a specific. Uh, say you have your uh, performance tuning some. Uh, some some of your software and you need particular version of kernel to be there. Uh, you can mention what version of kernel with uh, maybe even with a patch uh, to be on particular systems and then you can group them as uh, as variables saying that these are for this performance testing and these are uh, without the patch for uh, uh, checking the same workload on a different uh, machine uh, with similar configurations. Uh, the, the same thing, uh, variables with the same name uh, to take the precedence of uh, have you given it in the command line or have you given it in the playbook or inventory. Uh, but usually people use a playbook approach because ad hoc commands are okay for doing certain certain tasks saying that hey uh, uh, just uh, see just ping for the system and get me a particular variable or see the time scale. But playbooks are the way most of the people need to start deploying uh, are the only way to deploy large scale systems. Say you have more than computers which can't manage. Say you have like Seven hundred computers for something. So, so this is this is how we can use uh, variables. Uh, you can start a var block and then you can define the variables and then you can keep all of this in a users.yaml file and or every time you call a user, you can take it in this format as your var file, as your var syntax over here. So even uh, for uh, uh, you can also group your hosts and groups uh, as variables also. Uh, here you have the web servers group, and you can say these are the connections, and these are defined for these group that you're uh, engineering. Your, your staging environment has these systems. Your production environment has these systems, and then you can start assigning your users to foo, saying that certain like you, the developers in your car company get access to similar systems, but they are grouped with these two things. So for example, the users, um, the people in your engineering group would just get access, uh, access to this. People in your uh, DevOps would get access to production machines. Um, so you don't have to change the whole YAML script, but you just have to uh, 
uh, put the right key value pairs over there. Uh, so you can either run it like this, or you can run it in books uh, for a particular system, or you can run it for all the systems. And you can also um, uh, get different kinds of uh, notation, notional values out of uh, Like for example, uh, then you can also do, um, uh, you have a debug command and also a register command. For example, you would like to have a report of how this deployment went. You can use a register uh, option to get the output of what a particular command uh, did or what a particular script did in, 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 in all your systems or in a group of systems. And also you can use a de uh, debug values in your YAML scripts. Suppose uh, you're deploying to a few systems and then you want to see what is particularly going on in a, uh, in, a, in a particular level, then you have different levels of verbosity in which you can you can get the output. Uh, and if you have used the debug symbols, you can also use, uh, once you are giving your uh, command, end of the command, you can give verbosity hyphen v uh, for one level of verbosity hyphen v uh, for two levels of uh, verbosity and hyphen three, uh, three dvs for three levels of verbosity. So. Uh, so the other thing, uh, other uh, variable uh, is something known as facts. Uh, for example, you have uh, you have installed certain group of systems, and then you have new to the team or something. You want to gather some facts out of your system. Say you give a range of IPs to see what is what is exactly running in this system. So the, you can use the facts uh, variable, and then uh, you can get the fact, and also you can filter those as key value pairs, saying that. Just give me a fact of which kernel is which kernel version is running on these x number of systems, uh, and uh, these systems just need to be in your inventory file. You don't really have to. The only thing which you have to make sure is there is Python and OpenSSH installed on your group of machines, VMs, or their metal machines or containers, and it will get all the facts uh, particular to that machine or a service which is running within that. Machine. And again, like uh, uh, like simple programming languages, you have the conditionals saying that, uh, 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 like for example, in this one, when when you say if the inventory hosting x number of IPs or x number of FQ events of these this this particular uh, group is uh, databases, then you can say you can create database admin when 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 is the keyword which you need to look over here when uh, that particular machine is part of the DB group, so you can create a uh, this is one of the smaller tasks, and uh, you have you can use the same boolean uh, expressions, saying that check for all the systems which has uh, Ansible, uh, where the kernel version is 3.10 with this particular one, and the inventory host name is this one. So you can group these things, uh, or you can group uh, with the or, when, and uh, and. So you can check for name in item, group in item. Uh, you can follow the. Um, uh, you can you can group them together and then you can uh, loop loop over uh, loop over machines. Uh, even these are uh, pretty helpful. You can script out. Uh, you can automate uh, uh, most of the tasks which uh, uh, which uh, uh, I mean which you can think of uh, using these control flows. Uh, so. You can mix loops with conditions, and uh, uh, for example, you want to uh, you want to check on how many machines can I install this new software, and then a uh, certain number of machines. Uh, you can query saying that is it more than 30 GB? Is it more than 20 GB disk space available on these particular machines? You can uh, uh, on the root over here. That, that's, I mean, you can you can give commands like this to figure out what is uh, what is happening or how it is happening, or even if you want to reprovision. Uh, provision the systems and deploy your applications, you can just uh, just deploy on systems where uh, you have more than 30 GB of disk space on the root. So. And also error states, uh, for example, you're trying to install something, this, the package is not available, you can choose, is this package necessary for this task, or you can ignore these errors. Sometimes you get warnings and errors. Uh, which can fill up your uh, which can fill up your screen. You can choose to ignore few errors, and which uh, is helpful. 
or you can override and then you can uh, install. Like for example, uh, if there is something missing or something is failing, then you can notify uh, notify or abort that script and again rerun the script by installing the right packages, which is uh, all of this would be automated. Like any uh, infrastructure tool, you can log it, uh, and uh, you can also find the uh, uh, mo most of the Unix applications uh, log to standard error or standard out. Uh, even so, does Ansible. Uh, but if you, I mean, it doesn't do it by default. But you can, uh, uh, you you might want to configure if you want to absolute path for what your Ansible log operations are doing. Now. Uh, you can also use. Uh, something like the ELF stack, uh, uh, EFK stack or the ELK stack or uh, Prometheus to see how these logs. Uh, I mean, uh, if you want to uh, index and search your logs. Uh, yeah. yeah, as I said, uh, you can run the verbosity levels uh, and you can run these playbooks uh, like that. Uh, yeah. And you can batch process uh, different systems. Uh, for example, like you can see, uh, I mean, the number of tasks which needs to be run in serial or parallel, uh, one after the one, or linearly together. So, uh, or you can delegate it to a particular host also, or you can delegate the task which you are running. Uh, to a particular host, maybe you have a system which is monitoring, and also it means to say, uh, like right now you have uh, 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 you, the infrastructure changes like Kubernetes or something where which it sees a particular application is failing and respawns a new it respawns a new instance of that application uh, since it's failing. You can you can uh, you can use similar techniques over here, saying that you can have one controller node or another node which keeps on monitoring few other systems, and every time. That system is down or not reachable. It uh, it respawns another instance of that. Uh, you, you can automate stuff uh, like that too. Um, yeah. This is what I had uh, in the tutorial, uh, and uh, what I'll do is I'll uh, send out notes uh, for installation, and I'll also share these slides. There is also a workshop uh, workbook which I have made for this, uh, which I'll be sharing, and. Uh, uh, it has uh, it has the notes to set up your local environment uh, if you're on a Linux based one uh, or uh, a Mac computer. Uh, Windows uh, you might have to install a VMware. Uh, I mean you might have to install a virtual machine on top of your uh, uh, Windows and then we can uh, go through uh, the workshop exercises. So that's all I have. Any questions? I mean it's a, it's a tool which requires at least a half a day of uh, workshop to understand. Uh, what it's doing or uh, how it is doing. So how does this compare against the Jeff script? Uh, slight differences, but uh, uh, configuration and deployment within the same tool. Uh, I'm not sure Chef uh, does that configuration. And the second thing is, uh, I think Chef uses JSON as its uh, uh, input. Uh, I, I'm not uh, really familiar with Chef. I, I have used CF Engine and then. And now I'm using Ansible. Uh, and uh, one of the popular things about uh, uh, Ansible is, is the community around it. It's not only the Ansible community. Community is like uh, AWS, OpenStack, uh, Azure. All these people are contributing scripts to Ansible, so that uh, it's becoming uh, it's it's almost becoming a single de facto tool in the cloud for doing deployments. Uh, and uh, for example, if you have your own uh, uh, if you have your own in-house software and you're deploying to a particular particular set of machines or a group of machines which are both uh, in your data center and also the cloud, you can start writing, uh, you can start writing uh, custom modules for yourself. And it's very easy to do that in Python. And uh, Ansible is written in Python. The modules are also can be written in Python. And the only learning curve is you need to, most of the sysadmins nowadays know Python. Uh, the only learning curve is something known as a Jinja template in engine, uh, where you have to define your variables and all. So you can define those. Uh, you just have to pick up that small uh, uh, tool. Uh, for the, it's not a tool. It's like a uh, programming template. So it's a templating engine which you have to pick it up. Uh, 
Uh, rest of all, uh, if you are already using the popular stack like uh, your uh, Postgres, your MySQL, or uh, Cassandra, I mean, uh, the real stack or the LAMP stack, uh, uh, those modules are already there, and uh, it's pretty much that uh, you, it's pretty much that you are not solving anything new. Uh, there will be common cases, but uh, it, it takes care of most of the tasks which most of the people are doing, the general tasks which most of the people are doing, and even very specific tasks uh, which you can. And also with cloud providers, also it's pretty popular. Uh, not only the big ones like AWS or Azure, uh, it, it's popular even with uh, GCE, and it's also popular in uh, private uh, clouds like uh, uh, you have uh, scripts for Nebula, you have scripts for OpenStack if you are having your own private infrastructure. So the thing is, it's uh, one advantage clearly as is uh, they getting uh, both the configuration and the deployment. Uh, uh, deployment uh, 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 tool together, it's solving a lot of uh, uh, issues. And uh, the thing about getting your cluster to a desired state. So, yes. Yeah, we don't have any more type of questions. Uh, but there is the and biscuits object, so you can have your questions over the and biscuits. Yeah. I don't Yeah. And also, one thing, the Ansible community is very friendly. Uh, there is hash Ansible on uh, Freedom uh, and also on Slack. Uh, uh, they do reply to your queries uh, very fast and it's a growing community and uh, if you have specific tasks in your company or uh, if you want to uh, you know, uh, start contributing, the barrier is also very less. What you need to know is Python. Uh, even basic Python, it's not like a really advanced Python over there. It's just uh, basic concepts of Python can get you contributing to Ansible. Uh, so, yeah, I... Uh,